All right, this is a 65 reissue Deluxe Reverb that I've gone in and uh, made some changes to. I'm going to discuss some of the changes were for reliability, some of the changes for, for, for tone. As far as reliability, the two most important things besides replacing the uh, IC brand filter caps with f and T's, I'm not going to show that, it's on the other side in the doghouse. Um, the heater wires here originally went to these two connectors on the board. And that is just too much current for Quick Connects. Uh, you don't have a great connection with Quick Connects. And it doesn't matter if it's a high voltage connection. This is a high voltage, low current connection. That's okay. But these low voltage, high current connections for the heaters, they burn. They literally burn the wire. They burn the connections. They'll burn the board. So those are now run directly to the octal socket here, just like they were done on, on the 60s and 70s fenders. Uh, and the screen grid resistors have been moved from here on the board to the tube. These get hot. These can fail. If these get hot and fail on the board, you've got a big yucky mess. If these were, the, um, if these were to get hot and fail here, that's easy to change. Also went from one watts to three watts. So they're much less likely to fail in non catastrophic conditions. As long as you have the correct value fuse in here, um, these should not fail. Um, they do have some, some flyback diodes, uh, which they've mounted on the board as opposed to here, uh, without doing a lot of work. That's no convenient way to move them here, but they work well. Um, so those are the big reliability things. The other big reliability thing I did was on the pots and the jacks. I removed all the old lead free solder from each connection and replaced it with new leaded solder. Um, and then I made sure that all the hardware attaching the jacks and pots to the chassis is very tight because that's what's hold the, holding this board in place. I uh, also uh, tightened up the output jacks. Now on this amp, it um, has a Mercury Magnetics uh, Deluxe Output Transformer uh, per the customer's request. Uh, the stock one is not bad. Um, a Habor Mercury or, or a Classic Tone is a step up. In this, uh, this transformer, that he got uh, has a choice of two ohm, four ohm, or eight ohm taps. And I put in a, a J13 jack here for the auxiliary. So if you plug into just this speaker, you have uh, eight ohms. But as soon as both jacks are used, then, then it's using the four ohm tap. Uh, so that's nice, it, it changes impedance correctly. The negative feedback is always connected to the eight ohm tap though, so the circuit doesn't change radically. Um, I changed some values on the uh, pot score that you cannot see. I'll get to that in a minute. I did replace some values here uh, to decrease woof. Does not lose the low end that you want in a guitar, but it's not trying to amplify the stuff below 30 hertz that will not come through the speaker. That is not part of the guitar. It's just, you know, when you, when you rub the strings of your skin, all kinds of frequencies are generated there. Uh, and the amplifier duly tries to amplify it here, even though it doesn't make it through the output transformer into the speaker. And even if it did make it out of the output transformer, the speakers are not going to rep reproduce stuff below 30 hertz. They barely reproduce stuff below 50 hertz. Um, some, some of them barely reproduce below 75, 80 hertz. Um, all right, I did put some carbon comps here, which I do think makes a difference a subtle difference in a deluxe reverb. I didn't put them everywhere. It's where I find that they make a, uh, do make a difference. I upgraded the uh, cathode resistors here for some more reliable ones. I've seen some failures here. I upgraded all the uh, uh, ceramic disc caps to higher quality. I replaced this film cap with a ceramic disc because that's part of the sound of the uh, actual AB763s from the 60s. And yes, it's ever so slightly microphonic, uh, as are the originals. But in use, it, it doesn't matter. The hum is just because the, the guitar pickups are within a foot of the transformers. Um, as you can see, I uh, replaced, uh, I cut the trace from the volume pot on the uh, vibrato channel because it just ran through all this other stuff all the way through this board to get to the tube. And I replaced that with shielded wire because there was a lot of hiss that was not going away, and that's just due to a bad bo uh, board layout on these. And I added a mid spot back here, which you'll get here in a moment. Now, when this amp came to me, it had been modded uh, previously, and in my opinion, poorly. Uh, they'd done the world's worst implementation 
of getting reverb and tremolo on both channels, which resulted in a very high noise floor. And someone had put in two 22 nanofarad caps in the tone stack of the normal channel uh, for the quote Marshall sound. Well, changing those two caps alone will not give you the Marshall sound. Even if you change those caps and change the uh, treble cap, the pot values are still very different. This is 250K, 250K. Marshall is 1 meg, 250K, and it's going to have a 25K or 20K mid spot. This had 6.8K on the mids, and it had 250K audio, 250K linear. Uh, in addition to the, the tone stack not working right, even though it has 2.22, uh, 0.022s, um, the impedance uh, is, is very different. So this has a much larger load, so you're not getting that big gain increase. It was just uh, a less usable tone stack. Um, so here's what I've done. I've gone from... It, Originally was a 147 and then a 47 nanofarad. Uh, someone changed it to 2222. The, the solder joints were bad. The caps were all at angles. I changed uh, on the normal channel to 100 nanofarad and 22 nanofarad, which is what you find in the Super Reverb. So this channel is now very much like the, the normal channel in Super Reverb. It's got fuller, fuller uh, lower mids. <laughs> useful change to have. Uh, it doesn't need to sound like the reverb channel without reverb. It needs to have its own character. So it's a very simple change. It uh, gives a very usable um, sound difference. Now on this channel, I've got the mid spot set to where it is in stock form. So right now it's a stock deluxe reverb channel without the bright cap, um, with the shielding to reduce uh, the hiss that was there. <laughs> Which is here, I'm gonna turn it down. That's a guitar's a little bit out of tune, that doesn't sound like great. I'll do this on a simple chord. It gives you more gain as you go up to a certain point. From noon, at noon it's about 10 on a twin. At about 10 o'clock it's stock on a deluxe reverb. At about almost 9 o'clock it's about noon on a twin. Did I say noon is noon on a twin? Anyway, noon is as, as high as a twin or a super reverb mid-range control goes. Just below 9 o'clock is about where they are at 5. Then you go down just like you can on a twin and get that scoop. Above noon, you get into boost. Whether you go above uh, noon is totally up to your tastes and your guitars and stuff. Even if you just have it, uh, always use it, you know, say from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock. That's a real nice uh, range of controls. The tremolo is working, but I don't have the foot switch hooked up. Um, even without the bright cap, the channel gets nice and spanky if you want to. This doesn't do that nails on 
the, on the blackboard thing. And if you really turn the mids down and uh, turn the bass and the treble up, emphasize that scoop. than you want it. So I'm, I'm pleased with this little $5 edition. And uh, unlike uh, the knobs on the front where, I, where it obviously has the fender knobs, I could have used a fender stop knob on the back. I went with the chicken head just because when you reach around the, from the back of the app from the front, you can feel where it is with your fingers. With this, you can't feel where you're at. You've got to tilt the app over and look or listen. <laughs> Listening tells you an awful lot because this, this is not a subtle thing. Anyway, that's it for this uh, uh, reissue. Uh, this thing is about to get uh, a little bit of the wires neatened up here um, and shipped back off to its owner in Colorado.